Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa at Time 4 Off the Press. We will be taking you through the pages of our national dailies. And as always, we have Tunde Kolawale joining the conversation. He's a legal practitioner. Good morning, Tunde Kolawale. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning for having me. That's all right. Uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper and uh, we'll pay attention to the top stories in the leadership newspaper. The banner caption says 2023, no electoral law, no election timetable, INEC warns. Says passage of bill crucial to preparation. We will expedite action on bill. Ahmed Lawan is quoted on that and reps reconsiders uh, the bill today as Senate concludes consultation. Nigeria is becoming self-sufficient in fruit production. That's what the president is quoted to say. We achieved 9 million metric tons in rice production. Uh, MFL is quoted on that. Progressive women seek better deal from APC. You also have president never directed removal of fuel subsidy. Uh, that's uh, Lawan on that as well, and bandits attack 300 Niger communities, kidnapped 216 days. Very sad. Uh, Kanu declines to take plea on fresh charges, and several failure slows down NIN registration. Vice President Yemi Osibanjo urges Nigeria to imbibe uh, a virtue. Um, I'm sure you want to check what that means. Uh, that's the much we can check on the leadership newspaper this morning. Up next, let's look at the headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper. It leads with this headline, APC zones chairmanship seat not to North Central, this Southeast for Secretary. APC zones chairmanship seat to North Central, lists Southeast for Secretary. And South South to get deputy chair, we're confident of winning the 2023 elections. Buni. Committee concludes other positions today, confirms February 26 for con convention date. And uh, of course, um, activities surrounding Kanu's uh, uh, trial cannot also be left out of the pages as uh, the punch has this headline uh, IPOB's sit at home ground southeast. Kanu's trial holds today uh, pictures of deserted streets in parts of the southeast and of course protesters uh, are at the premises of the federal high court in abuja uh, and security operatives who uh, later came to disperse and we told there was a sort of a face-off between Kano's protesters and security operatives at the top of the paper we're seeing a headline we're preparing to launch second satellite in 2022 minister we're preparing to launch second satellite in 2022 minister interesting times and uh, let's see what will happen to those satellites if it'll be a bit different from the previous satellites um labor list conditions for fuel subsidy removal says 9.5 billion dollars wasted on refineries labor list conditions for fuel subsidy removal says 9.5 billion dollars wasted on fuel on refineries picture of Ayuba Waba, uh, the chairman of the NLC there. A cash trap banks uh, borrow 9.17 trillion naira from CBN in seven months. Wow. Uh, another one will forward amended electoral act bill to Buhari this week. Lawan will forward amended electoral act bill to Buhari this week. Lawan, that's the Senate president. Another headline, bandits killed 300 persons, kidnapped 200 in Niger. That's Niger state in January attacks. Governor, bandits killed 300 persons, kidnapped 200 in Niger attacks in January, um, says Governor. Very, very, very worrying statistic there. At the bottom of the front page of the Punch newspaper, these, these headlines, uh, Abuja passengers kick as NCAA stops departing plane for inspection hmm, never heard of that before mercy um abuja passengers kick as ncaa stops departing plane for inspection canadian nigerian born canadian minister suspended for using phone while driving frsc blames speeding as 12 killed in ondo highway crashes nscdc nabs four headsmen robbing travelers on quara highway Presidency, wealthiest as parent who fail or Shibajo best in APC, says ex governor Aliu. And finally, no capital vote for Nipost in 28 
years. That's coming from the Postmaster General. All right, away from the punch, let's check out the Nation newspaper this morning. And uh, the bold caption says, How Governor's Forward Plot to Squattle APC Convention. New leaders to be elected February the 26th. Buhari supporters seal date. And that's what you have there. No decision yet on petrol subsidy removal, says Ahmed Lawan. That's uh, very, very, uh, you know, funny and interesting as well. Uh, 2023, you have collision begins lobby for Jonathan. Uh, find out which of the Jonathan they're talking about. Uh, you also told you have stock investors for terrorist link screening and fresh treason charges for a uh, false shift of Namdi Kanu's trial. And just before we move away from the nation newspaper this morning, Nigeria on food sufficiency path, says the president, as one trunk uh, of rice production has been made. President to get reworked electoral bill this week. Lawan raises hope. Senate and House begin work. Uh, all right, that's it on the Nation newspaper this morning. All right, time to delve into the de this details and, of course, analysis with uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawale, who is a legal practitioner. Um, but before we do that, yes, okay, yeah, he's a legal practitioner, of course. Um, uh, let's start things off with a story from the uh, the APC. And, of course, uh, Messi, as you rightly said, in the on the front page of the Nation newspaper, some attention, major attention being given uh, to that story. Uh, Ms. Kolawali, what are your thoughts on this? Um, finally, the All Progressives Congress has a date and, of course, has finally also zoned um, the seats, different offices uh, in the, its executive to the different geopolitical zones of the country. We're hearing North Central will take the chairmanship. Your, your, your thoughts on this? Well, uh, thank God that um, the APC has uh, finally been able to set the rank court and arrive at a place in which uh, their convention will be held in Borgoglio that has stalled the convention and to the best of my mind, would have been a thing of a worry for most Nigerians. Because this is the ruling party, uh, the, the party that is in power, we, we, all, we, have, we, have all, we all expect them to be better organized than they have demonstrated. Furthermore, don't forget, we have been practicing this democracy since 1999. That is more than 20 years ago. So by now, we expect that all the different political parties would have been getting deep with the nuances of democracy, with the nuances of party organization, with the nuances of organizing conventions, rallies and party congresses and what have you. But that has not been our case. But the FTC is even more worrisome in the sense that uh, part of the ladder they used to climb into power is the absence of organization in the party that was before them. That is the TDP that was in power before them. But they are demonstrating that they are worth organized and even the TDP as a political party. But just like I said, thank God is coming. But the question the average Nigerian will be asking themselves is, if the party said it's not organized, then how will they be able to govern, rule Nigeria, organize Nigeria in a diligent, in the most coercive, in the most uh, 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 predictable manner? Because if you as a party said not organized, Chances are that you not be able to govern in a very decent manner. So it's sad that it took them this long, but it's never too late. Thank God they get their act right and then organize a convention that will be satisfactory to the rank and file and all members of that party. And for the good governance of Nigeria. 
Oh, all right. That, that story, by the way, is from the Punch newspaper. Uh, Messi, before, before I come in, I just want to ask a follow-up question. Uh, you, you, you said you hope, uh, Mr. Kolawale, that uh, they can um, uh, put the accident. But that's a big question and a question on the minds of a lot of people because of the, um, the emergence of parallel uh, state executives in different states across the Congresses federation. Congresses, yes. 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 So, so are you confident that they can do what you're hoping they will, which is to get the acts together and organize one national convention? I doubt it. I doubt it, but I don't want to be seen as a pessimist. Uh, the reason being that um, you and I know the origin of the APC is an amalgam of different political parties. But it seems that they have not been able to kind of collapse the different political parties that form the APC into war. They have been finding it difficult to unite and to come out with one single political party with a single ideology, single orientation, and a common goal. But in almost all the different states of the tradition, Oshun, for example, Imo, for example, Lagos, for example, all the different uh, parallel congresses and conventions, they have not been able to resolve those issues. But it's not impossible that with the intervention of Mr. President and the Vice President, and when they also see that their lack of organization or disorganization, that the other political parties, especially the PDP, might take advantage and then uh, roll back to power. This might be the reason why I am optimistic that they might still be able to cobble together a similar uh, kind of alliance that would at least allow them to be able to participate in the 2023 election. Because our allies are incorrigible people, they know what is at stake. And know that if they don't get the act right and they lose political power at the center and the, in the state, that might be Armageddon for them. Okay. It will be difficult for them, for them to come back to power in a very, very long time to come. All right, Tunde Kolawale, let's also shift our attention and look at the leadership newspaper this morning where the yes. electoral umpire is saying there will be no timetable. Uh, if there's no electoral law. Where does this leave us as a country? Uh, honestly speaking, the INEC people uh, have been economical with the truth with regards to that uh, pronouncement. The truth of the matter is, and the position of the law is, the 2011 Electoral Act can still be used to conduct the next election if no new electoral act is passed. Because the 2011 electoral act has not been abrogated and there is no lacuna in law. The electoral act that they want to pass into law now is nearly to close the loopholes or some of the deficiencies that they have seen in the 2011 electoral act. I suspect that they also want to raise the electoral process to a higher level so that they will be seen to be open their act. But to say that because this, but I mean to say that because 2003 electoral act is not passing for law, there will never be an election, there will never be a timetable. I don't agree with that. What I next require to do is to amend the own internal rules and regulations for the conduct of the election. In the light of the 2011 Electoral Act, if no new Electoral Act is passed into law, but with that as it may, it is better for us to have a new Electoral Act. You and I saw all sorts of deficiencies in the Electoral Act of 2011 that led to a plethora of court cases, a lot of rancor, which we are yet to recover from. So the better they pass the new Electoral Act into law, and the quicker that Mr. President signs this into law, the better for us as a, a nation. The contentious issues are about two or three. Transmission of results 
Pierre and Metro making it. And then the use of uh, direct primary for the selection of the flag bearers of the different political parties. I think there was also one other item that Mr. President disagreed with. You can amend the areas the president has disagreed with. You can even expunge them totally from the proposed electoral uh, law, electoral law, and then pass it to Mr. President to sign. But that will not speak well for us as a nation because we are in the 21st century and every nation of the world always find ways and means to improve on the electoral process. So why would Nigeria stagnate? And say, for example, the transmission of the election results to electoral means that Mr. President is complaining about is not a new thing in Nigeria. The 1999, I mean, I think 1999 election was that brought Abiola, I mean, that Abiola was set to one, was transmitted largely to electronic means. And it is also not true that in some local governments of Nigeria, there are no frequencies to transmit elections uh, results uh, electronically. You can use Suraya. You can ask the army to make their facilities available for you. Furthermore, the police also have communication facilities. They don't use the ordinary I mean, the facilities that you and I use. And there are other mechanisms, ways and means, that some of these results can be transmitted. So, but we don't know why Mr. President is opposed to the transmission of the electoral, election results to electronic means. For the selection of the flag bearers of the different political parties, I agree with Mr. President that it is not good for us to dictate to the different political parties how they select the different, their different flag bearers, whether through consensus, whether through direct primary, or whether through the delegate system. That is their internal affair. The people in the National Assembly merely went to pass that into law as a means of caging the godfathers. The people who dictate those who carry the flag of the respective political parties. Instead of using the electoral to fight the godfathers and to ensure that the result of the National Assembly without any impediment, they should go into their respective political parties and fight the godfathers. After all, the land can fight. The ordinary members of the different political parties are more than the godfather. Okay. They can ensure that the wins and capacity of the godfather does not always carry the day, does not determine who gets the flag to run elections or to stand for, 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 for elections in the different political parties. Okay. That aspect of the Electoral Act, in my own opinion, was made um, kind of um, an enlightened certain threat, or even if you like, describe it as an, an unenlightened certain threat. They did it for the past nine steps, not because they want a better democracy or a better method of running or selecting the flag bearers of the respective political parties. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kolawole, uh, interesting analysis uh, I'll take from you, and of course we'll have in-depth a look at this uh, uh, later on in the program. But I want to take you back to the front page of the Punch newspaper, where, of course, um, yeah. uh, Namdi Kanu returned to court, uh, reappeared before uh, Milo, the Honorable Justice Bin Tanyaku yesterday, uh, with uh, uh, an increased count, uh, uh, now 15 count charge instead of um, uh, seven previously, bordering on uh, treasonable felony and terrorism. Uh, we hear that uh, the sit-at-home order by groups supportive of Kanu um, in protest that his arrest and detention grounded activities, halted activities in parts of the southeastern uh, area of Nigeria. We see pictures of deserted streets on the front page of national dailies. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you make of this, this whole sit-at-home and of the, um, the, the whole process, especially the sudden amendment to the charges the man is facing? You know, if uh, you remember, I have been one of uh, 
those Nigerians who have been saying that coming case like that of Kensaluwe were not meant for the court. These are cases that better results politically. And my position would appear to be coming to all, to be coming to pass. I will do at this stage start amending the charges against Kano. In fact, before you arrest Kano, you would have known you would have established what crimes he has committed. Before you arrest him, you would have known what crime he has been committed. That even the charges would have been prepared, it would have been ready. The fact that they have continued to amend the charges against Kano would appear to me that they are not even sure of whatever crime Kano may have committed. That they are merely fishing for crime and fishing for evidences within which to nail Kano. Go and write this down. If Kano's case is taken to the wrongs of the court, if Kano's fire is allowed to run, so either conviction or accuser, Mr. Kano will be hanged. Because the body language of the people in power today is not to see Kano exonerated, discharged and accused by our court, but to put him out forever and ever like they did to Kensarulua. But for God's sake, there are solutions to this problem. If millions of people in a particular section of the country are saying this is what they want, for God's sake, the owners lies on us. So listen to them okay. and find political solutions to their problem. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Kolo, uh, so, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, is uh, the conduct of a referendum. Okay, Mr. Kolo, in the yeah, Mr. Kolo, well, sorry to, to interrupt you. Uh, uh, whilst we wouldn't want to look at the the issues, you know, before the court for which he he's being tried, but 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 I would like to take you to to the statement of um, the, the 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 lead. Uh, counsel for the federal government, the prosecution team. He said that everything that is being done has been done in accordance with the administration of criminal justice procedures and that this was not unknown to law to come up with uh, amended charges uh, 24 hours or barely 24 hours to uh, the court date. That is not true. Let me give you one example. Do you know the canon of the law? is that um, you are not supposed to arrest, arrest a suspect. You are not supposed to take anybody to court on a holding charge. It would appear that what they have simply done is to arrest Mr. Kanu and take him to court on an holding charge. And then now begin to investigate and now begin to collect the evidence and whatever material they are going to use against them. That is not the law. You go to other parts of the world. Or take, for example, the case of evil Osh Poppy. Have you heard, since Mr. Osh Poppy was arrested, that the American uh, FBI have been amending the charges with which they have taken uh, Osh Poppy to court and the other people? Why can't say nobody arrests you until a prima facie evidence? until the prima facie case is established against you. It is only in Nigeria that the security people will arrest before they start investigation. And then when they take you to court, and then you apply for bail, they will say, my Lord, please, don't grant them bail. We are still investigating with tamper with the potential of investigation. That is putting the cat before the house. A man or a woman is arrested for suspicion of crime, is supposed to be taken to court within 24 hours if there is a court within jurisdiction. And if there is none, you take him to court, the nearby court, within 48 hours. These people are not ready to try Mr. Kano. It would appear to me they don't have any sufficient evidence against them. It would appear to me that they also realize that the state is political. That is why they are finding ways and means to keep him in perpetual custody until they probably 
uh, get through with the election of 2023. Because whichever way Mr. Kanu's case go, we have a lot of implications and ramifications for the 2023 election. And the party in power that is trying in will not want anything that will jeopardize their success, their victory from 2023 uh, election, either in the other parts of the country or in the southeast. And you and I do know that the party in power is desperate to have a foothold in the southeast. I repeat, Carlos case is not a case for the court to decide. It is a political case that we should resolve on the round table uh, conference. I have had people say he uh, insulted Mr. President, he is this and that and all that. That is not issue. An ordinary citizen recently slapped the president of uh, France. And uh, nobody shot him, nobody killed him. They merely arranged him on the civil, in the civil court for mere case of assault. Whereas the president of France, the security people around me, could have opened fire on the young man and killed him right where he committed that uh, crime. So see, we have to be tolerant. And we must show leadership. And we must not because of uh, one provocation or the other that the suspect may have engaged in, begin to use a sledgehammer against that kind of a person. Leadership is all about tolerance. It's all about vision. It's all about you know what is good for the country. In the nearest future, or in so many years to come, it's all about you know what will not undermine the foundation of Nigeria as a nation. The people in power today would appear to me to be insensitive. So the balancing act that the Nigerian nation is all about, they are CSF, they are police, and all their army are behaving in such a manner that is most unbecoming, that is very unprofessional. Okay, um, and the rule of the for the want of time, giving the people in authority, the appropriate advice as to get out this matter to be resolved. Mr. Tunde Kolawole. Uh, let's just let's just move away. I mean, we can never exhaust this conversation, and, and we, we, as we you know proceed, we hope that we we continue to have uh, this conversation until uh, the desired result is seen. But just before we move away, uh, because we're out of time, let's share your thoughts in sixty seconds or less. Uh, President never directed removal of fuel subsidy. Uh, that's what the Senate president quoted to say. And that's on the leadership newspaper, the, by the way. When uh, the present government talks about subsidy, I laugh. This is a party, this is a presidency that went around the country and said, first of all, this is a scam. That the PDP were merely skinny and the kind of um, stealing Nigerian money to a subsidy scam. Now they have got it to power and paid more subsidies than even the PDP who was in power for about 16 years or thereabouts. So where have they now found the subsidies that they are paying? Truth of the matter is that uh, we have never demonstrated the capacity to manage the oil sector in such a diligent manner in such an organized manner, in such, a, in such a transparent manner, so that we could derive value from that area. It has always been tough for the board. When elections are coming, they will award Jimbo contracts for turn around maintenance for the different uh, refineries. When uh, they have some projects to do at the political party level and then at the individual level, they now begin to talk about the subsidy. So, for me, I don't believe that there's any subsidy anywhere. What they call subsidy is our ineptitude, is our inability to manage the oil sector so as to get value from there. If we have been able to run our refinery the way it should be run, we wouldn't be talking about oil subsidy. And I ask, why must we be doing turnaround maintenance for all these uh, refineries? 
almost uh, on the yearly basis. There are refineries that are older than, that are more than 100 years old in different parts of the world that are still working efficiently and smoothly. It's only in Nigeria that the refinery that is less than 50 years old. You have to turn them around almost on a yearly basis. With that as it may, let me conclude by saying that this may not be a popular thing or opinion that I'm expressing. Let these people remove the subsidy. Because the subsidy has always been the excuse that the Nigerian ruling elite have been given for their inability to deliver value, to deliver the citizens of democracy, to govern the country well, to provide infrastructure. So let them remove it. If they remove it, let us see what new lies they will now begin to tell for their inability to run the country the way it should be run. We all know that corruption is at the bottom of all these crises, but they say it is a subsidy. So let's give them that's the benefit of that. Let them remove the subsidy and let us see what new lies they'll be putting on our table. All right, Tinder Kola, we, 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 we have to end the conversation also at this look point. At the area I, of, I'm uh, so sorry. Security. We have to let you go now, Tunde Kola Willie. Thank you so much. We're really out of time, but it's always great to speak with you, and we look forward to uh, having you on the show next week. Thank you so much for Thank you being part for of the show. Me. All right. Uh, well, that's the size uh, of the newspaper review. We will definitely return at this point in time. Uh, let's tell you what happened today in history. And when we come back, we head straight to our first major conversation.